Hi folks, welcome back to our series of instructional videos on the Mentor UT. Um, I'm Dan, Dave's here with me. And this video, what we're going to do is take a look at an app that gives us a little bit more control over uh, the setup of the instrument. In the corrosion demo app that we showed you previously, uh, that app was created very specifically for this plate. Um, everything's been kind of preset for you to make it very simple to go step by step, bang, 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 right through the demonstration without really having to adjust much of anything. We have another app that we include with the Mentor UT uh, that we call Corrosion DM, and we'll take a look at that. And it's going to look in a lot of ways very similar to Corrosion Demo Kit, but in the Demo Kit app, on many of the menus, we've actually removed controls from the menus, and that's all things that are very easily done using Mentor Create. As we built the app, we've gone in, looked at the menus, and said, what are the menu items that are absolutely essential to doing the, uh, the demonstration, and what are some parameters that might cause us to go off track if we set them incorrectly? So the things that might have taken us off track, we've either locked or removed from the menu entirely. Um, for the essential items, we've left those there and made sure they were very close to the surface. In this app, even though it has many of the uh, same or similar panels, we've left pretty much all of the menu items on there and enabled so that you can go in and make changes to the instrument setup as you go through the process. So again, here we have a dead element check. It says go to the five millimeter step on the block. And it wouldn't have to be the demo block that we're using. We could use a, you know, the five step calibration block, whatever's, whatever's handy for us. But get to the five millimeter step, dead element check, probe's good. Just like before, we're gonna do a two step thickness calibration, except in this case, it's telling us to go to two and a half millimeters. So I go to the two and a half millimeter step and I see, well shoot, my gate isn't quite over the echo properly. So I reach up here with my finger, grab the edge of the gate, make the gate a little bit wider, get it centered over the echo. There's my two and a half, about to 15. 15 millimeter echo is right in the middle of my B gate, I'm happy says 5948 so had a little bit of error in the in the velocity calibration there I think due to how thin we went on the thin step but still uh, very much in the usable range for operation go ahead go to the next step the delay calibration 15 millimeter step we're already there cal and we got a good calibration and I see I'm within six one hundredths of a millimeter of the thickness I expected. If I drag my gate out a little bit wider, come back, there's 10 millimeters. See my TA uh, readout up at the top is the thickness seen in gate A. There's 10 millimeters, 15, seven and a half, five, and two and a half, my gate's not quite back wide enough. Two and a half. So I'm within a couple of hundreds of a millimeter right up across the range of the block. So, so with TCG, if you recall from our earlier video, the Corrosion Demo app uh, has a five point TCG curve. Maybe we want to have a few less points in the curve. So if I come up here to my amplitude menu, A scan menu, come down here, I see a couple of items related to TCG. I have number of TCG points right now set to five. Let's just change that to three. Because maybe I'm using, I only have a three-step wedge available to me, so that's what I'm going to have to use. And then right now, the first TCG point was set to a distance of two and a half millimeters. So I have the point number and the distance. So let's go to point two. 
6.2 expects to be at 5 millimeters, and let's say just for the heck of it, I want to make that 7.5. So I change 0.2 to be 7.5. 0.3 was 7.5, and, and I want to make that 15. Okay. And if I get back to 0.1. Point one was two and a half. So I'm going to do two and a half, seven and a half, and 15 millimeters as my steps for my TCG curve. So at this point, I can close that menu. And I hit calibrate to start the TCG calibration. It says take me to two and a half millimeters. So I go to that step. There we go. Go to seven and a half millimeters. Take some gain out. Good there. Go to 15 millimeters. And now I have a TCG curve. So if I watch, there's 15 millimeters. I'm right at 80%. Come back. There was 10, 7.5, 5. 5 is a little bit hot. That's right about the sweet spot of the, the uh, probe. So if I'd been a little bit smarter ultrasonically. I would have put one of my TCG points there at five, but we didn't. We went two and a half. But there's two and a half, right at eighty percent. Five's a little hot. Seven and a half's at eighty percent. Ten's right about where it should be. Fifteen's at eighty percent. So we've successfully changed the uh, the setup parameters of TCG, and we've run through the calibration. Next step, just like before, is auto 80. So I can find that 11 millimeter notch. It's right there, 80%. So we have a scanner calibration here, and we actually have access to the parameters that establish uh, the scanner calibration. Scan axis length is how far are we going to move the encoder this way during the calibration. Index axis length, how far are we going to move it this way? Okay, So from the notch on the left of the gantry to the notch on the right, um, we preset to be 105 millimeters. That's correct for this, uh, this gantry system. And we have notches uh, or line scribed on our demo block five inches or 127 millimeters apart. Um, again, if you were going to uh, calibrate the scanner on, say, a measured one meter of your desktop, you would set that, uh, you'd set this parameter to be one meter. We're going to leave it set to 127 millimeters. And just like before, we move to zero, zero, cal. Move it to our other line that way, and that way, and go back to zero, zero. I have a little problem setting my system up here. And now we're all calibrated. And next we go to our scan panel, and this is very similar to the panel that you had before, except this time we don't have the, the uh, picture of the block up there. We just have, the, uh, have some readouts, a little bit bigger. Uh, all the views are spread out just a little bit better. And again, I can hit record. And in this case, you'll notice the pictures on the C scan are looking a little bit different than they did before. And that's because we have a different palette, color palette selected. I'll stop my acquisition, come in here to the appearance screen or menu. And I have the traffic uh, color palette selected. In this case, uh, this is a nice palette for thickness scanning because red is thin, green is thick. Real easy to tell, good area from bad area, uh, but it's very 
you notice we just have a red, green, and uh, yellow area of the, the palette. Uh, there aren't the smooth gradations of color that we saw in some of the others. Uh, let's see, if we go to rainbow, we can see smoother uh, gradations of color. Grayscale, for those of you who are uh, radio, uh, radiographic inspectors, this might be a very uh, intuitive and convenient uh, palette for you. You know, dark areas are thin, bright areas are thick, you know, just like a, an x-ray, piece of x-ray film. Uh, so we had the traffic palette. When you're in the traffic palette, uh, the time of flight color range is a very uh, useful feature. You notice it's a dual control and it's setting the upper and lower ends of the cutoff for the palette. So you'll notice if I move the start up, it's considering thicker and thicker areas of the scan as too thin or red. You notice the red on the palette here is changing. I can bring the green areas down as well. So you notice by shifting those two controls around and moving them closer together, I can move, I can make less of a yellow, less of an uncertain band. If I lock the two sides together, I can now move that down and set a thickness threshold where I start to be worried. So if I have a nominal 15 millimeter thick plate, and all I'm really worried about is seeing the areas where I'm thinner than say four millimeters, I can use a palette like this and set my threshold to about four millimeters and you see my two and a half step is really showing up. Some other holes and corroded areas of the plate are really showing up. So you can start to use these color palettes and these thresholds to your advantage to very rapidly spot trouble within a scan. Okay, so I think that concludes uh, this episode. Thank you for joining us. Again, this is Dave and Dan for GE Inspection Technologies.